Welcome to an exploration of engineering marvels that transcend borders and redefine scale. Mega projects that dwarf economies and reshape landscapes. These colossal endeavors, their costs eclipsing the GDP of entire nations, stand as testaments to human ingenuity and ambition. Their budgets soar higher than the combined wealth of 55 countries. From the breathtaking spectacle of the world's longest bridges to the awe-inspiring heights of towering skyscrapers, these projects rewrite the rules of possibility. The fusion of innovation and determination brings to life wonders that propel us into the future. Futuristic cities emerging from deserts, sustainable megastructures harnessing renewable energy. These projects redefine our understanding of what's achievable. Join us on this journey as we delve into the realm of the unimaginable, where costs surpass entire nations' economies. Explore the magnificence of these mega-projects that stand as testament to humanity's boundless potential and the relentless pursuit of greatness. Subscribe to Witness the Extraordinary, like, share, and stay tuned for an adventure through the colossal world of mega-projects. Between 1998 and 2004, the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, reached skyward as the tallest buildings globally, standing at a towering 1483 feet. These Malaysian marvels edged out the Sears Tower in Chicago by a mere 33 feet, securing their place as architectural giants. However, their reign at the top was short-lived. The construction of Taipei 101 in Taiwan shuffled the rankings, and then came the ultimate behemoth, the Burj Khalifa, in 2010, soaring to an astonishing 2717 feet, eclipsing all prior records. Yet, despite relinquishing the title, the Petronas Towers remain the planet's tallest twin skyscrapers. Home to the National Petroleum Company, commonly known as Petronas, these $1.6 billion marvels boast the world's highest two-story bridge, connecting the 41st and 42nd floors. For a breathtaking view of the Malaysian skyline, head up to the observation deck on the 86th floor. Architect Cesar Pelli, an Argentine-American visionary, infused a distinctive postmodern style into the towers, intending to create a 21st-century icon for Kuala Lumpur. He artfully blended Muslim architectural principles and Malaysian design, making the structure a testament to the country's rich cultural heritage. As with many mega-projects, challenges arose during construction. A batch of faulty concrete brought progress to a halt, sparking fears of widespread structural issues. Thankfully, the flawed concrete was limited to a single floor, swiftly rectified to ensure structural integrity. However, this setback cost the project a staggering $700,000 per day. The Petronas Towers stand not just as architectural marvels, but as a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance, overcoming challenges to create a symbol of Malaysian ambition and culture. In the mid-2000s, Singapore decided to roll the dice and entered the high-stakes world of casinos. After a 40-year gambling ban was lifted, the city-state aimed to rev up tourism and supercharge its economy. Big players like MGM Mirage and Wynn Resorts vied for the chance to set up shop in this bustling hub, but the ultimate winner was Las Vegas Sands, the force behind the famed Venetian Casino Resort in Vegas. With a grand vision and a whopping $3.2 billion investment, Las Vegas Sands embarked on a colossal project called the Marina Bay Sands. To secure their spot, they shelled out nearly $4 billion for the project on top of the $1.2 billion spent on the 6 million square foot site. However, due to labor shortages and escalating material prices, the total cost ballooned to an estimated $8 billion in Singaporean dollars by 2009, roughly $6.8 billion U.S. dollars. This mega-complex was touted as the most expensive standalone resort ever conceived. But here's the kicker. They actually pulled it off. Today, Marina Bay Sands stands proud, flaunting a 2,500-room hotel, a colossal 1.3 million square foot convention center, a shopping mall, a museum, and a galaxy of celebrity chef restaurants, including not one, but two Wolfgang Puck establishments.
And let's not forget the heart of the Thrill Seeker's Haven, the casino floor. Picture this. 500 tables, 1,600 slot machines, an absolute paradise for the gambling aficionado. But wait, the piece de resistance is the San Sky Park, a jaw-dropping 1,100-foot skyway linking all three towers. And get this, you can take a plunge into an infinity swimming pool while soaking in the breathtaking Singapore skyline. Marina Bay Sands isn't just a resort. It's a testament to audacious dreams turned reality, a marvel that blends opulence, entertainment, and a touch of adrenaline in the heart of Singapore's bustling landscape. Picture this, sailing down the Red Sea between Saudi Arabia and Egypt, and suddenly you spot your reflection along what seems like a 110-mile mirror. But hold on, it's not a mirror. Instead, it's an incredible 1,600-foot-tall, 660-foot-wide, and 110-mile-long structure. Say hello to Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman's brainchild, the awe-inspiring Neom Project, famously known as The Line. Some might call it the sustainable city of the future, while others might raise an eyebrow at its futuristic vibe. This $725 billion marvel is envisioned to operate solely on sustainable energy. No cars allowed. Instead, imagine zipping from one end to the other in just 20 minutes aboard a high-speed underground train. Between these colossal mirrored buildings lies a lush outdoor oasis, creating an unprecedented living experience for around 9 million residents and employees. But here's the kicker. AI will be keeping a watchful eye on this city. Mohammed bin Salman plans to use data models to optimize city living. Though let's admit it, the concept does sound a tad matrixy. The line is a bold step in Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030, aiming to position the oil-rich nation as a global leader in sustainable innovation. Construction kicked off in late 2022, and by October, drone footage surfaced, teasing the initial groundwork for this ambitious venture. Saudi officials hint that living on the line might become a reality as soon as 2023. Or is it in the line? Perhaps at the line? The future's looking intriguingly futuristic. Elon Musk's vision for the Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada, is beyond monumental. We're talking about a structure that'll outsize iconic landmarks like the Great Pyramid, the Empire State Building, and even the Burj Khalifa. Picture this, a staggering 15 million square feet of space, set to be the world's largest footprint, all powered by renewable energy. In one of those famous chats with Leonardo DiCaprio, Elon Musk broke it down. He believes a hundred gigafactories worldwide could be the key to powering our entire planet sustainably. But here's the catch. The Nevada gigafactory, though groundbreaking, is only about 30% complete. Tesla announced expansion plans in 2022, but the full-scale dream is still a ways off. The story of this colossal project starts back in 2014, when Panasonic jumped in to invest $5 billion. With the how in place, it was time for the where. Tesla scouted several locations, but surprise, northern Nevada wasn't even on their radar initially. It took some convincing and a few persuasive trips before they settled on the Tahoe-Reno Industrial Center trick. But here's the twist. Nevada's Gigafactory isn't the Lone Ranger. Tesla's got more tricks up its sleeve. Giga New York, stationed in Buffalo, focuses on power pack batteries and solar panels. Meanwhile, Giga Texas, Tesla's freshest addition in Austin, isn't just HQ. It's where Model Ys, Model 3s, Cyber Trucks, and Cyber Semis roll off the assembly line. And let's not forget the international gigafactories. There's one revving up in Shanghai, China, and another in Berlin, Germany. These global hubs are pivotal in Musk's master plan to revolutionize how we power our world and drive towards a more sustainable future. Imagine this, Jubail, Saudi Arabia, once a quiet fishing village nestled by the Persian Gulf, 
transformed into an industrial powerhouse. It was the mid-1970s when the Bechtel Corporation, an American engineering giant, stepped in and laid the groundwork for what would become the largest industrial city on Earth, sprawling across a mind-boggling 687 square miles. This colossal site, upon completion, became a behemoth contributing around 7% of Saudi Arabia's total GDP by the turn of the millennium. But wait, that's not where the story ends. The Saudi royal family had bigger plans. Enter Jubail II, the expansion that aimed to double the city's original size. This mammoth civil engineering project added housing for 120,000 new residents and birth at an 18,000 student university. Fast forward to today, and Jubail stands tall as a heavyweight in the global energy market, magnetizing top-notch tech and business minds from across the globe. This expansion, Jubail II, aims to cement its dominance, becoming a pivotal player during peak working seasons. Here's the kicker. This project is a colossal machine, churning with 20,000 workers per month during its peak. A staggering $4 billion has been poured into infrastructure, weaving hundreds of miles of roads, water, and waste facilities and utilities. But hold on to your hats. Another $18 billion is earmarked solely for expanding the city itself. This expansion is no sprint. It's a marathon split into four phases spread across 22 years. The current plan pins Jubile eyes completely on B24. But you can know how this a grand projects go. A pandemic-related hiccup might just tweak that finish line a bit. Jubail, an evolving marvel, rewriting the narrative of what's possible on a grand scale. Picture the Blue Nile River a vital lifeline coursing through northeastern Africa, originating from Lake Tana in Ethiopia, traversing Sudan, and finally flowing into Egypt, spanning a whopping 1,600 miles. Now here's where the tale takes an intriguing turn. Back in the early 2010s, Ethiopia made waves by unveiling plans for a monumental $5 billion dam on the Blue Nile. Initially tagged as the Millennium Dam, this ambitious project eventually earned the moniker of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERD. The driving force behind this colossal structure? To illuminate Ethiopia, a nation where 60% of its people lived in the shadows without access to adequate electricity. Enter the vision. The GERD aimed not just to power Ethiopia, but to overflow with surplus electricity, enough to sell to neighboring countries like Sudan and Egypt. Sounds fantastic, right? Well, here's where the plot thickens. While the dam was slated for a 2017 unveiling, squabbles among Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt cast shadows over its progress. Egypt, heavily reliant on the Nile, feared the GERD would become a faucet of scarcity, limiting water crucial for Cairo. Ethiopia, on the flip side, sang a different tune. Caught in the middle, Sudan navigated through these heated waters. Cut to that dramatic summer day, Prime Minister Abi Ahmed Ali sliced through the grand opening ribbon. Voila. The GERD officially clinched the title of Africa's largest hydropower dam and ranked among the planet's top 20, rubbing shoulders with China's Three Gorges Dam. Yet this tale isn't over. It's a saga of power, water, and geopolitics, where the waters of the Blue Nile carry more than just sustenance. They ripple with tensions and ambitions, reshaping the landscape of northeastern Africa. Imagine the Yangtze River, China's lifeblood, nurturing nearly one-third of the nation's population, around 400 million people, residing along its banks and tributaries. But here's the twist. While the river serves as a vital source, northern China's industrialized regions grapple with parched rivers and water scarcity, enter an audacious solution that brewed in the mind of Mao Zedong back in the 1950s. Mao envisioned a colossal engineering feat to quench China's thirst, a trio of canal systems spanning the east, west, and central regions. However, 
political ripples and controversies kept this mega-project confined to the drawing board for a staggering 50 years. It wasn't until 2003 that the gears of construction finally churned to life. But wait, buckle up. This mammoth undertaking is slated to span another 50 years, boasting a jaw-dropping $62 billion price tag. Welcome to the South North Water Transfer Project, a game changer aiming to redirect a whopping 48 billion cubic meters of water annually from the Yangtze River to the parched northern regions. This colossal venture unites China's four main rivers, the Yangtze, Yellow, Hai, and Huai. In a nutshell, picture water diverted from the Yangtze near Yangzhou, streaming eastward along existing channels towards the Weishan Mountains in Shandong. Crossing the Yellow River via a tunnel, it rushes into Tianjin. The central route diverts water from the Han River, destined for Beijing, a leg they hope to complete for the 2008 Olympic Games, though only a quarter of it materialized. Meanwhile, the western route redirects 4 billion cubic meters across the Bayan Kala Mountains into northwestern China. It's an epic narrative of ambition, engineering marvels, and the quest to quench the thirst of a nation, reshaping the very flow of China's rivers to sustain its future. If you found this video fascinating, there's more where that came from. Click the link on your screen to explore another riveting story. Your curiosity will thank you. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to tune in next time for more incredible journeys.